question of the colors by Joe. Thank you. Roll call. Gilson. Here. Order. Here. Zelensky. Here. Walter. Here. Mons. Here. Sokko. Here. Spears. Here. Teeling. Here. We have a quorum. The next item on the agenda is introduction of guests. What we do is uh, have the staff members introduce themselves, and then we ask everybody in the audience if you would be kind enough uh, to state your name. We just go through the audience. And also there's a sign-up sheet being circulated. If you would sign in, please, that helps the city clerk keep track of who is here in attendance tonight. And later on when we have citizens' comments, uh, if you wish to come forward, there's another sign-up sheet up there so we can keep track of who is addressing the city council tonight. So we will begin with uh, the city administrator. Bart Olson, city administrator and interim director of Parks and Recreation. Richard, would you please? Eric Dews, director of Public Works. Chrissy Hall, community relations director. Joe Larimont, city engineer. Rob Fredrickson, finance director. I'm Boyce community relations. OK, uh, young man, could you tell us your name? Kyle, yeah. Sam Gardner, litigation counsel for New York. Kyle Walker, New York. Front here. Thank you for all being here tonight. Uh, we have next amendments to the agenda. I have uh, right off one amendment I'd like to make to the agenda tonight. And let's see. <coughs> uh, this one. 
going to double quote and then under the ABC. Mayor's report number 12. Okay. Yes. Okay, I would like to table item number 12 under Mayor's report, an ordinance amending city code providing for an admission fee at intertrack wagering locations. I'd like to entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Okay, um, and table it to the next city council meeting on December 14th. Okay. Gilson. Hi. Aye. 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 Okay, are there any other amendments to tonight's agenda? Alderman Gilson. I'd like to pull PW 2010-80 for further discussion. Are there any other amendments? That's um, number seven under the consent agenda. Prairie Meadows. Are there any other? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone against? Nope. Okay, also we would like to move up uh, the executive session. Where do you want it? Uh, the executive session would come hopefully after citizens' comments. So okay. Figured now, we're not going to um, Following citizens' comments. Could we uh, entertain a motion to do that? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So the executive session will be after citizen comments tonight. Okay, committee meeting dates. Public Works Committee meeting. Uh, 6.30 p.m. December 21st, 2010, City Hall Conference Room. Economic Development Committee. 6.30 p.m. December 7th, City Hall Conference Room. Administration committee meeting. 6, 6 p.m. December 16th, uh, City Hall Conference Room. <clears throat> and public safety committee meeting. 6 p.m. December 20th, City Hall Conference Room. And all of these meetings are open to the public, and I'd like to encourage all of you to attend. We'd like to hear your feedback on the items they're discussing. And the agendas are uh, online. You can find it on the city's website. The next, is, next item is presentations, and uh, this is always a fun part of being the mayor. I get to uh, give recognition to some people who have done some good things for the city. And the first one I would like to ask um, Eagle Scout William D. Parker to please come forward.
Thank you very much. two young men who came in second and third place who showed up and helped me light the Christmas tree. Uh, we thought that their essays were so great too that, that we wanted to uh, recognize all of them. So I'd like to ask Le Lexi Weiss to come up. If you don't mean, I, I don't mean to embarrass you, but I. Thank you. <laughs> I think it's great. Um, I titled my essay No More Presents, and my most heartfelt Christmas memory is when my family stopped giving presents. Instead, we went on a family trip to the Wisconsin Dells. We had to spend a lot of quality time together, and it was so much fun to run around the water parks. I will always remember that trip. It just really doesn't matter where we go, but it's the fact that we are together is what counts. Isn't that what Christmas is all about? <laughs> this certificate of recognition, the Mayor and City Council of the United States of Yorko present to Lexi Weiss for submitting the first place winning entry for the Holiday Under the Stars essay contest. We commend you for your dedication and for sharing your Christmas memory with the Yorkville community. Congratulations. Congratulations. Now the second place winner, Kyle. Kyle. Okay, Kyle. Tell me, uh, let's let's hear what your Christmas essay was about. My Christmas essay was about when I woke up, all my presents were on my bed and all my stuff like that I like and my room was clean. <laughs> on your back, right? Mm -hmm. So thank you for sharing that with us. And we're the mayor and city council present this certificate. Now, how do you pronounce your last name? Yezek. Yezek. Kyle Yezek for submitting the second place winning entry for the Holiday Under the Stars essay contest. And we also commend you for your dedication and for sharing your Christmas memory with the Yorkville community. So here's your certificate, and here's a little something for you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> because his brother Ryan was the third place winner. Uh, Ryan. <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> Both Ryan and Kyle were at uh, the tree lighting ceremony, right? Mm -hmm. So why don't you share with us uh, what your story was about, okay? One Christmas, a, bl a blizzard came while we were driving to grandma's house in Texas. The interstate was closed down and I was scared, but our dad got us safe, safely to, to a hotel. Having my family safety, safely together on Christmas Eve was my fondest Christmas memory. That's great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And you also get a certificate of recognition for being the third place winner uh, in the Holiday Under the Stars essay contest. And the city council and I commend you for your dedication and for sharing your Christmas memory with the Yorkville community. So thank you very much. I think they did a fantastic job with the tree lighting because as soon as they pushed the button, everybody said, woo! So I think very good. Yeah. It was great, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Okay. We have no public hearings tonight, so anyone here who would like to address the City Council, uh, please come up to the podium and sign in. Is there anyone who would have a comment they would like to make to the City Council tonight? 
No. Okay. What we're going to do next is uh, we have to go into executive session. We try usually not to do this. We try to schedule it at the end of the city council meeting because we don't want you to be sitting out here waiting for us. But uh, sometimes some things connect to things that are on our agenda. So tonight we're going to uh, go into executive session at this unusual place in our uh, agenda. So I'd like to entertain a motion to go into executive session uh, for two reasons for litigation and for the appointment employment compensation discipline performance of specific employees of the public body. So moved. We have a second. Second. Roll call, please. Spears? Aye. Closure? Aye. Order? Aye. Walensky? Aye. Teeling? Aye. Gilson? Aye. Sutcliffe? Aye. Moss? Aye. This is the one you pulled out, right? This is the one you pulled out. Moving forward, I'd like to entertain a motion uh, to approve the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Order. Aye. Walter. Aye. Spears. Aye. Lons. Aye. Sopa. Aye. Gilson. Aye. Teeland. Aye. Walensky. Aye. Motion carried. Motion carried. Unanimously. Plan Commission Zoning Board of Appeals report. Um, just an update. Uh, we were tenancy. Uh, Plan Commission had a formal hearing on the Minutes for approval. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of the City Council for September 28, 2010, as presented. We have a second. Second. Alderman Lund seconded. Do we have any corrections or comments on tonight's minutes? Roll call, please. Oh, no. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, bill payments. I'd like to make a motion to approve the bill list in the amount of $629,467.33 vendors and $238,564.54 payroll period ending 11-6-2010 for a total of $868,031.87. We have a second. Second. Alderman Munn seconded. Do we have any comments on the bill list? Alderman Spears. I do have a question on page 29, uh, YEDC. It says in uh, administrative annual meeting, and it's charged to training and conferences. And Bart, do you have a copy of, of the budget? Because according to the information I have, we have no funds in that account. Might be need to be coded to uh, travels, travel meals and lodging. Then one of those two line items has some money in it. So. Okay, and that is. I'm trying to see what the balance is there right now. So that was when both you and the mayor attended the dinner, correct? Correct. Actually, just for correction, Alder and Plocher attended ah. on, my, on my behalf as the mayor pro tem. Yes, that's true. Any other comments? Roll call, please. 
Launcher? Aye. Spears? Nay. Mons? Aye. Sutcliffe? Aye. Gilson? Aye. Sheelan? Aye. Walensky? Aye. Order? Aye. Okay, there's a rather lengthy mayor's report tonight. I apologize. <laughs> a lot of things on here. Uh, the first item under the mayor's report is appointments to the Cultural Commission. We recently established a Cultural Commission. Uh, and its purposes is to establish things like museums and try to encourage art galleries, those kinds of things to come into the city and oversee uh, the um, preservation of the old jail and renovation, which all of that is supposed to be done without any expense to taxpayers. So uh, the first person I would like to appoint to um, this commission is uh, resident Gary Shermer, and he is a local artist who I think would be very important uh, to help us understand how to encourage people to open up galleries or to um, do exhibits in Yorkville. So. Uh, he's a resident of, uh, I believe, of Ward 2. <coughs> I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the appointment of uh, Mr. Shermer to the commission. So moved. <coughs> Second. Any comments or questions on this appointment? Roll call, please. Aye. Aye. Spears? Aye. Fulcher? Aye. 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 The next appointment I'd like to make is of Mr. Howard Manthai. Uh, he's the former president of the uh, Kendall County Historical Society, and um, he is um, a docent and a member of the board of the Old Barn Museum. And uh, he is also. Uh, I think he's a resident of Ward 1, so he's also a Yorkville resident, and uh, he has a very uh, strong commitment uh, to serving Yorkville. So I'd like to uh, entertain a motion to approve Mr. Manthai to the Cultural Arts Commission. So moved. Second. Any comments or questions on this appointment? Roll call, please. Spears? Aye. Closure? Aye. Order? Aye. 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 Okay, the next appointment is of uh, Stephanie Todd, and she's the chairman of the Kendall County Historical Preservation Commission. Uh, she has a lot of um, contacts that I think will help us get grants to do, uh, to help us with the old jail. And I think uh, she's also on uh, liaison the Citizens Advisory Committee and the Chicago of the Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning. So I'd like to entertain a motion uh, to approve Stephanie Todd as a member of the so Cultural moved. Arts Commission. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Any comments on Stephanie? Yes. She lives in Oswego, correct? She does. Okay. She's, she would be one of the non-residents. Any other comments? Roll call, please. Closure. Aye. Order. Aye. Lenski. Aye. Teeling. Aye. Gilson. Aye. Sutcliffe. Aye. Mons. Aye. Spears. Aye. Motion carries. Okay. There are four more positions for this commission. Anybody who is interested in serving on it, please uh, contact uh, the city secretary during regular office hours, or you can download. Uh, um, application forms off of the city website. The next item is appointment to the city's Human Resources Commission. We have a vacancy on that uh, commission and I would like to fill it uh, by appointing Anna M. Schwem. Could I entertain a motion to approve uh, the appointment? So moved. Second. Okay, and uh, I think she pretty much explains her interests, and she is already volunteered to help implement the community garden for us. So I think uh, that's that's an initiative that the Human Resource Commission is undertaking right now. Any comments or questions on this appointment? Roll call, please. Mons? Aye. Spears? Aye. Welcher? Aye. Order? Aye. Zelensky? Aye. Sheeling? Aye. 
Aye. Okay, the next item is a proclamation for National Drunk and Drug Driving 3D Prevention Month, December 20th, 2010. Whereas motor vehicle crashes killed 911 people in Illinois during 2009, and whereas 319 of those deaths involved a driver impaired by alcohol, and whereas the December holiday season is traditionally one of the most deadly times of the year for impaired driving, and whereas for thousands of families across the state and the nation, holidays are a time to remember loved ones lost, and whereas organizations across the state and the nation are joined with the You Drink and Drive, You Lose and other campaigns that foster public awareness of the dangers of impaired driving and anti-impaired driving law enforcement efforts, and whereas the community of the United City of Yorkville is proud to partner with the Illinois Department of Transportation's Division of Traffic Safety and other traffic safety groups in that effort to make our roads and streets safer. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Valerie Bird, do hereby proclaim December 2010 as Drunk and Drug Driving Prevention Month in the United City of Yorkville, and do hereby call upon all citizens, government agencies, business leaders, hospitals and health care providers, schools and public and private institutions to promote awareness of the impaired driving problem, to support programs and policies to reduce the incidence of impaired driving, and to promote safer and healthier behaviors regarding the use of alcohol and other drugs this December holiday season and throughout the year. Okay, items number four through ten are um, ordinances abating taxes we have to pass every year uh, to keep these from going into uh, the tax rolls. So, is that correct? Yes. Making sure. So, um, these are uh, things that we need to do to make sure that taxes don't increase. And I'd like to entertain a motion unless any of you want to go through these one by one to approve, um, to abate these special service areas, um, items CC 2010-91 through CC 2010-97. So can I entertain a motion to approve these abatements? So moved. Second. Do you have any comments on these abatements? Roll call, please. Aye. Number 11, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve an ordinance for the levy and assessment of taxes for the fiscal year beginning May 1st, 2011 and ending April 30th, 2012, and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute. So move. Second. Okay. Can we have any comments or questions on um, the taxes levy? Roll call, please. Mons? Aye. Spears? Nay. Closure? Aye. Order? Nay. Walensky? Nay. Teeling? Aye. Gilson? Nay. Sutcliffe? Aye. Burn? Aye. Okay, and the next item, number 12, was table. Um, Item number 13, I ask to have this put on our agenda tonight because uh, there seems to be a lot of confusion about um, the water bonds and the sewer bonds that are coming due, that uh, these increased payments that we're going to have to pay. And I want to explain uh, what the city has been doing, what the staff has been doing to uh, try to come up with solutions for this. We've, of course, we've seen this coming for a while, uh, but there's only so many things we can do uh, with the water bonds. The staff did try to refinance, and uh, so I asked to have bond council come in tonight to explain it more clearly so we all understand it. There's 
there's uh, so many problems with it that this is not something that we can get rid of by just cutting staff. And right now, just so everybody understands, our city staff is pretty close to being about uh, 30 police officers full time. I think is, that's right around there, right? And we have some part time officers. And then we have about 52 full time employees on the other side that's doing parks and recreation, uh, public works. Does that include library? That includes library. And uh, unlike all the other municipalities around us, the city of Yorkville does not have a park district and it does not have a library district. The city budget has to cover everything. So um, we do have a levy that about a third of our levy goes to the library because they are able to levy a certain percentage of their own. But the parks and rec is totally within the city budget and it's, it's you know, we decide how much of our budget goes to them. So. Um, with that, I'd like to turn this over to the city administrator, and he's going to explain it with uh, the help of our volunteer council. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, my memo, I think, pretty well walks you through the process um, that led me to three scenarios. Um, and without talking about anything uh, that's above those three scenarios, uh, they are, um, really, our options are, um, not abating certain property taxes, which is an automatic provision within the bond ordinances of certain bonds uh, to be put on the uh, uh, special tax roll. Actually, it doesn't even get put on, it reverts to. The ordinance is already in place with the schedule, um, so it reverts to the tax roll. Uh, creation of uh, what I would term a sewer uh, infrastructure <coughs> bless you, uh, improvement and maintenance fee, similar to what we've done on the water side. Uh, and then uh, refinancing to be able to utilize those two, two tools. So um, the three scenarios are in your packet. Uh, I'm not suggesting that you refinance uh, or restructure any of the bonds uh, simply because of the um, interest costs that uh, we're already going to be paying over you know, tens or twenties of years, uh, in 10 or 20 years in the future. Uh, and really, uh, refinancing a bond that we're maybe four years out of 20 uh, into uh, is just going to add five or six million dollars in interest cost per restructuring that we do. So uh, that is shown in option two. Um, you know, basically what you're doing if you're doing option two is uh, you're paying a little bit less now uh, and a lot more later and for a lot longer term. So uh, I think it's pretty clear to see uh, when you look at the amount of the bonding fee is kind of the, the measure to see what the impact is to the residents. Uh, that restructuring and refinancing isn't the option, but uh, nevertheless, we did look at it. And Bond Council is uh, here. We've got Peter Raphael and Alex uh, Grancelic from uh, uh, William Blair Company, and they can answer questions if you have any on uh, maybe why you can't refinance certain bonds or why you can't restructure them or why it's not advantageous. Um, but, uh, you know, the three options are on the table. The one thing with each uh, of the three, um, in my analysis, I had actually missed one of the sewer bonds, 2004A, which is our combat hydraulic bond. So you add those in, and it actually makes scenario one and two worse. The, the bonding fee goes up because there's a debt there I didn't account for in my preliminary analysis. Uh, but on the third one, there was a calculation error within one of the cells um, that actually brings it down, even though I'm adding in that additional bond. So uh, I've got that here, and I can pass it around if you want to uh, take a look at it. Um, you know, uh, basically scenario one and two, like I said, the bonding fee goes up. Scenario three, it would go down uh, to the point of, under scenario three, if you were to uh, revert uh, our two Rob Roy sewer bonds uh, to property taxes, um, you could have a bonding fee uh, in the first year of only uh, $9.27, so that's per month per user. So um, it's a lot better than scenario one or two where we're looking at uh, bonding fees of uh, 30 plus dollars and then increasing for years beyond that. To me, that's uh, uh, not an acceptable option. So uh, with that being said, uh, like I said, I, I tried to put everything in the memo that I could think of and hopefully I made it clear enough. Um, you know, I can entertain any uh, questions anybody has about the memo. Like I said, bond council is here. Uh, and then additionally, too, uh, I have printed off copies of the two Rob Roy bonds that talks about uh, the revert uh, to property taxes in case if anybody has any questions. Um, if somebody can go make 20 copies of whatever's sitting on the copier, uh, we can hand them out. Somebody a little bit, Claire, would, would you explain a little bit about um, with the water bond 
that you were telling me about where you drop the payments to later? Water what, bond. When we were trying to refinance the water bond. I think we postponed some of the payments. Uh, oh, uh, yes, with Rob Roy, uh, you've actually already done one restructuring. So uh, we knew about this issue two years ago uh, and it acted on it with city council uh, approval to restructure your Rob Roy bond, which is 2005D. If anybody's looking at the, uh, the packet, you've got your scenario three in there. That's probably the easiest one to see. Um, there's a chart at the bottom. It's 2005D Rob Roy and the 2008 Rob Roy restructuring. Basically, we had uh, a seven year or an eight year bond that had large principal payments that were supposed to be paid for uh, with infrastructure participation fees uh, to be collected by YBSD when uh, new developments annex into the city and the sanitary district. Connection fees, uh, and I think even uh, there were some sewer uh, fees that you pay on your utility bill that we had pledged to those. Uh, we got to a point uh, a couple years ago that we looked at our payment and said, we can't make this this year, um, but there's some growth in the future that we think is gonna come in, so let's just postpone these payments uh, for now until the end of the bond term. So we actually took two payments. The uh, layman's term is called the scoop and drop um, and put them on the back end of our bond. So we delayed two payments that should have been made the prior fiscal year and two fiscal years ago, uh, all the way out to fiscal year 16, 17, and 17, 18. Those are two $1 million bond payments, so $2 million total, but it costs us an additional million dollars to do that. So we've already done it once, and that gives you a good idea of the impact of what restructuring does. And it shows you that we've already done it, and we're still staring at the problem, you know, two or three years later. Oh, and as I said before, part of the problem with the water fund was in addition to these issues with um, uh, having to pay for the radon, the radium, which was mandated but not, we weren't given any funding from the state to do this. Uh, so we had to pay for that outright. And then uh, projecting that we thought all this growth was going to come in, so uh, the previous administration moved forward with that and, and we thought at the time that that was going to pay for itself, and it turned out it didn't. We also ended up stuck with $800,000 of um, pay, repayment that should have been set aside. Uh, I don't know, was that in 2006? Yes. Something like that, uh, that we discovered after I became mayor and the city attorney negotiated an agreement with Bank of America, which took over from MPI. And so the city is now required to pay $27,000 a month for three years, I believe? Yes, it, the total amount due is over $800,000. It was $825,000. And we negotiated a repayment on a monthly basis without interest. And uh, the original agreement that said the amount due is if it was not paid, it would be paid with interest. So we had no alternative but to go with that settlement. In, and the first we heard about it was, I think, uh, right before the foreclosure when they suddenly said, where's our money? And it, it should have been set aside as each um, uh, entity came in and uh, tapped onto the water. Correct. A certain percentage was supposed to be set aside for MPI, and it, uh, they failed to do that, and they spent all the money. So now we have to take it out of uh, the water fund, and that was in part one of the reasons why the water bills went up. which. So now we're looking at issues with the sewer, and uh, it's, it's the debt is so large that, as I think was said at a previous meeting, we could lay off every person on the administrative side and we still would not be able to meet the bonds. So it's not a question of us just, you know, uh, being able to avoid this. If we don't do anything, it's going to go on to the taxes the real estate taxes because it's guaranteed by the real estate taxes. So um, we either refinance and it's going to cost the taxpayers millions and millions of extra dollars or, you know, we let it go on to taxes and from what I understand, hopefully um, because we will have that revenue stream that's assured, then we can refinance and perhaps get a better interest rate and lower the payments. That's our hope. So would you gentlemen like to come up to the 
podium and if there are any questions, I thank you for coming out tonight. I appreciate it. Uh, they're here to answer any questions you might have about the refinancing or what the other, you know. Uh, <clears throat> I don't, the mic is on. I'm Peter Raphael with William Blair and Company. And I have some familiarity with the, the Rob Roy deal. And as Bart mentioned, we saw this coming. We tried to take some precautionary measures two years ago. Um, the goal in this deal was that as we expanded to the north, the sewer tap fees and the water tap fees would be used to pay this down. Well, as we all know, the development has virtually stopped and uh, the, the revenues did not materialize. This was an alternate revenue bond. So the first line of defense was always the revenues from the tap fees that were pledged. To the extent we don't generate those fees, it is set up to go on to the tax bill, and that's where we see ourselves now. In order to refinance this, we would still have to be able to show revenues, and under the statute, it's 125. So for every dollar of debt service, we'd have to show a revenue stream of 125. Right now, all that revenue has been pledged or is at least being used for all of our other debt obligations. So, you know, we, we don't have a lot of options. And um, we've looked at a few. Um, to get to a 125 coverage would mean a massive restructuring of all the city's debt, which, as Bart mentioned, adds millions of dollars of interest and stretches the payment out over 20 years. So. I guess the structure that BART is recommending is we're going to have to bite the bullet for a few years. If revenues turn around, maybe in three or four years we can do something, but for the next couple of years we are really limited in our options. Do, do you understand the legal issue about not being able to restructure? We as a non homer municipality can't issue bonds unless we show that we have an alternate revenue. So we were able to issue these bonds when they were issued because we had alternate revenues. And that revenue stream was there with the new development. And now what we're at is we have these bonds that we would love to refinance, but the quote alternate revenue is not there. So you can't refinance an alternate revenue bond without alternate revenue. So that we are legally tied. The only way to do it would be to put it all under the GO. And as, as Peter mentioned, when we went through that scenario, it resulted in a minimal additional payment of $12 million. And given the fact that that's maybe the routine that the state of Illinois prefers, it's not the routine of this administration to be as a recommendation. But it's very easy for people to say, we'll just refinance alternate revenue bonds. They do not understand the legal limitations and the legal ramifications so that most of these bonds because they were based on hopes and actual experience of the revenues coming in at the time were legally issued but cannot been, be legally reissued. Does that help? The, uh, the one option you have um, if you entertain the idea of a bonding fee um, would be to roll the first year in uh, over perhaps nine billion periods instead of six. So we are halfway through a fiscal year. We didn't plan to implement anything, but it is an option you could entertain. And what that would do, it would mean that your first year bonding fee would be a little bit less than what it is now at no additional cost, you know, in interest. So instead of collecting, oh, let me pull up my number here. Instead of collecting 656,000 from 50, 5,900 residents or 5,900 user accounts over 12 months, you do it over 18, and instead of it being nine and a quarter per month per user, it's only, let's say, 750 or 775. So uh, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but um, you, know, you would decrease it, and that's a form of restructuring that doesn't cost us any additional interest. So um, you know, that's one option. Uh, nothing. I, I'm suggesting that um, if you're looking at scenario three, your fiscal year 11-12 gap to be covered, 656,646, just that number be spread over 18 months because fiscal year 11-12 doesn't actually start until May. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to start now, we have a bill going out at the end of December that you could begin to collect and then for the first year and a half it would actually be less of a burden uh, on the residents per billing cycle 
uh, and then of course it would be the same in fiscal year 12, 13. So, you know, that's one form of restructuring that doesn't cost any interest because you're not doing any bonds. You're just saying, instead of collecting it from you starting May, we're going to start collecting it now. So, um, back to the analysis um, section. You know, I talked about the, t uh, the fee or the cost being passed on to residents as either regressive or, you know, progressive, uh, and then trying to split it between property taxes and user fees. And there are some advantages to each uh, way. Uh, when you look at straight user accounts, you have a lot more residential user accounts than you do have commercial. So any money that you put on a user account via fee um, is going to be weighted more towards the residents. When you put something on property taxes, um, there are those same amount of businesses, but their properties are worth more. So they would pay a little bit more uh, on the property tax. So when you split it up between the two, um, you know, you're taking both sides and you're saying, well, you know, for this methodology, you know, you're getting the benefit of the doubt and on this other one, you're getting the benefit of the doubt. So um, you know, I think that's the best option as far as splitting it uh, and then, you know, hopefully decreasing the burden a little bit. Property taxes are also uh, income tax deductible uh, if you own the house. So, you know, there are things you can do that, um, you know, there might be a, a small shred of a silver lining to uh, uh, this tough situation. Clear on this part, and I'm reading this correctly. On your um, scenario number three here, okay, all the debt listed on the top table will be taken care of with the bonding fee. Correct. And the uh, last column, that's a monthly fee that would go on the water and sewer bill? Correct. And at the bottom, the Rob Roy bonds, that would revert back to property taxes? Correct. And these are the numbers and the tax rate? So you're looking at a $250,000 home in the first year. An extra two hundred and forty-one dollars would be on that type of tax bill. Yes. Whoa. Just for Rob Roy. Yes, it's um, just over half of your total tax levy uh, would be due. Your total city corporate tax levy uh, for the debt service for uh, those two bonds. <clears throat> when you put it in perspective, like we like I've said many times, if you have a three hundred thousand dollar house, the city of Yorkville itself not without the library lobby but just the city gets about four hundred dollars so yeah. this would be like you said Definitely. this is two hundred and something just to pay this bond just to pay perhaps i misspoke when i compared it to the tax bill it'd be just over half of your city tax levy so not your entire tax right, bill right. just your city city portion. levy by right, 200 because the city levy is about seven percent of the total yes. tax bill so you know we've been trying to keep the city levy fairly low and not be a burden on the taxpayers, but this is something, you know, we're stuck with these bonds. We can't pay them. And if anybody can figure out another way, I, we've been looking at this for several years and we can't see our way out of this mess. Anybody have any other questions? No? Yes, ma'am. So who was a part of this committee or this meeting that, that put together these numbers and scenarios? Just the, the restructuring? Yeah, restructuring. Um, I did the data analysis and kind of re-did uh, some of these numbers. Uh, Peter and Alex had provided all the refinancing options, the restructure, um, and they actually had sent over the spreadsheet uh, with different refinancing options. So I tried to tweak it based off of what I thought was uh, the best options. And uh, can you give an opinion which you feel is the best scenario, the best restructuring? Well, <clears throat> if we took scenario three, and again, it, it, I understand it's painful, um, the Rob Roy restructuring, which is the portion that hits the real estate tax, is something that is flexible and we can review annually. So, for instance, if development did start up on the north, um, those revenues would come in and be able to decrease the levy or maybe eliminate that levy. Um, in addition, we can look as we go forward, is there a chance to refinance that at a later date? So if we were to bite the bullet for the first year, we can come back and address it again next year to see if there's another solution. 
Um, for this year, though, it's, it's obvious we don't have the revenue and we don't anticipate the revenue. So because of the way the indenture is written on this or the bond ordinance, we really don't have a choice. If we don't have the revenue, we have to levy. Mm -hmm. And what about the other, um, did anyone look at the, this monthly fee on the, on the water bill? Do, uh, what would happen if that were to go into property taxes as well? Or you just decided to split it up? Uh, we didn't look at the water fee specifically because it's already in place. Yes, it does have to be reauthorized because it sunsets by city council, but uh, we figured it was in place. And given the fact that when we looked at refinancing and restructuring, uh, it became clear that that wasn't the option, in my opinion. Um, I didn't do any further analysis on the water side. So when, when you look at these um, these bonding fees that, that are going to be in, uh, added to the, the bill, is that an additional? Yes. An additional? This is the sewer side. The water fee is already side. set at eight and a quarter. Right. So, because we just increased it, what, yes. eight, eight and a quarter? Yes. To pay for our water side. No, this well, this is right. This is a sewer bill. I, I know, but they get this. They get the whole bill together. They'll see the total on their bill, and they, it's hard to d differentiate when you're paying a big bill. What's sewer and what's water? To them, it's a big bill. To me, it's a big bill. It would be listed separately on a bill. Uh, we have that capability now to add an additional line item, which was. I think one of the complaints uh, a couple of billing cycles ago was that everything was lumped together, but uh, we do have the ability to break it out now. So. It's not an option to put that into property tax because it's the water, the um, sewer, the sewer, the whole thing. This is all sewer, right? All this no, is sewer. Instead of having this bonding fee, can you put everything on? Oh, um, or is that? You That's might be, yeah, you know. might be able to. Um, As a homeowner, it's less painful to me, and I get to tax, I get to deduct it from my taxes. Sure. I mean, it's painful regardless, but that monthly fee is pretty hefty. Yeah, um, just looking at uh, scenario three, uh, and I haven't studied the, the uh, bond ordinances at all, but uh, 2005C, 2004B, and, and uh, 2003 uh, a, uh, my guess is those are all probably able to revert to property taxes. Thank you. Right. Bart, any, anything that was an originally an alternate revenue bond, we, we potentially could do that. Anything that was a debt certificate or otherwise, we don't have the legal authority to issue uh, ob general obligation bonds or, or put that on the levy. Do you know off the top of your head which ones of those are debt certificates? Um, I don't. We have here, though, that um, on, the, on the sheets that we gave you, Bart, that the uh, council does not have, um, I would say about 50% of the outstanding debt obligations are alternative revenue bonds. So there could be some engineering done where we could push more onto the tax bill. Um, it's a matter of what the city council wants. We're going to pay it regardless, in my you're, opinion. You're going to pay it one way or the other. I'm going to pay it regardless. To me, I, 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 you know, personally, I'd rather, you know, pay it my mortgage and, and at least get a write-off from it. It could be, it's a little, so looking at it every month, they only have to look at it twice a year. <laughs> I don't know. It's, I just wondered if you looked into it. If, if, we can study Anybody, that and bring if, it back. If, if the council wants to know if, if they feel like it's worth it. Are you just looking for an individual consensus from every one of us as to what's proposed here right now? Well, what I was looking for, number one, was to inform everybody of the facts so that everybody would get a feeling for what we're fighting here. And uh, number two, if you want to weigh in, um, I think that would be great because it will give staff direction. So, I, yes. If you would like to give your opinion, you could start. Well, I, if, you're, if we're going to go across the board and do an individual consensus, I, I sure I have some comments. But I, I you know, obviously, if, if we're not going to be doing that as a whole. And we're just looking at going further and looking at possibly adding it to the property taxes. Then there's no sense in, in discussing that. Okay. Well, do you 
You want to say one, two, or three, Alderman Galinsky? Well, actually, I still had a question. Go ahead. Um, has there been any discussion with YPSD to see if there's any way they can help us out? I know they're sitting on a big fund balance reserve and all these assets, especially to Rob Roy. I mean, these are assets that are going to be turned over to YBSD when they're paid for. Yeah, I had a phone conversation uh, with their finance director, as you may know, uh, was our former finance director. Uh, and so she is uh, familiar with our debts and, um, you know, their financial situation. Um, and she did not feel that there was any part of uh, YBSD's budget that was either uh, needed to be forwarded over to the city or could sustain uh, this debt. So she didn't put that in writing, but uh, um, that's what she had expressed to me. anyone else have any questions no. so can we oh I'm sorry well, are you gonna pull the, yeah I was okay. going to start pulling so Alderman Galinsky would you like you to can start on the other side okay <laughs> <laughs> Kitty corner <laughs> no. well I don't like the idea of refinancing I think that's a bad idea I mean it's $4 million for one of the bonds and $6 million for another bond. and Plus, we still have a huge bonding fee that we have to pay. Um, none of these are very good scenarios, but we, do, we had to pay the bills. And um, in the perfect world, we'd have the money to pay this if things were still going that the way that, that they expected them to go when they made these agreements. But we all know that that's not going to happen. So I would have to say um, of all these terrible scenarios and all these different ways we could do this, I think the third one would be the only option that I could go with. I guess what I'm going to say is, is not to be contentious or debating. Uh, it, it's just to say it, to look at this thing with a critical eye. I, I, you know, it, it's been said that we can cut all staff and still not meet our obligations. and, and I guess I still feel that more cuts need to be made in both personnel and spending. Uh, as I mentioned in committee, and I'll, I'll mention here again, before we make any final decisions and seriously discuss any sewer fund obligations and potential for adding a, another sewer fee, uh, and, and specific, specifically to what amount, uh, I guess I'd like to see the, the, the numbers finalized and in front of me, including cut proposals. Um, you know, as I said, that being said, I guess I want to point out some of the issues that's, that's brought us to this extreme and the answers to my questions at the committee level so that people out there understand what we're looking at. Number one, in, in terms of the sewer fund at the city, and this is before my involvement, decided to front fund and take on the responsibility of debt to an estimate in this number I got from you, Bart, in committee level, uh, to the estimate $225 million in, in, in the name of growth. And, uh, you know, I was told this would have normally been funded by the Yorkville Bristol Sanitary District. You know, our, our sewer fund is supposed to be self-sustaining, yet it's not. And, and we talk about it being improper uh, budgetary procedures to try to take excess from other funds and funnel it in to pay that down um, because it's an enterprise fund, but an enterprise fund should have been self-sustaining in the first place, so we certainly are in a catch-22, uh, you know, you know, we're, we're currently paying back the Grand Reserve developer for water connection fees that we agreed to rebate once collected. And we never rebated them when we collected them. I mean, that's, I mean, this is what we're, this is why we're here. You know, third, we have a, an estimated $1.3 million, and I'm using that rough, that, that, that amount in rough terms, uh, of bad debt due to non-collection of developer fees and deposits per our city policy. Uh, you know, once again, now we want the residents to pay for all the above mentioned issues, and I feel we need to get creative, look outside the box in some manner or another um, without raising these fees again. Um, and like I said, if, that, if that's improper budgetary procedures uh, by looking outside the box and, and carefully planning the funnel of excess funds from other, uh, other, other accounts uh, into that to pay that down, uh, you know, let's look at bringing in good commercial retail development, you know, cut spending, cut personnel, do whatever we can in our power uh, to avoid 
passing this burden along to the residents in a time of recession. And I, I understand the argument, but I, I just, you know, I didn't get us to this point, and, and nor did the residents. And uh, yet we're here. And uh, you know, I can, in good conscience, vote for a, a sewer fee uh, increase in addition to the, the water infrastructure fee that we just added to the bills. And, uh, I, and that's where I'm at on this. Thank you. Me? Well, um, I didn't hear an answer in there, uh, really, a, a, a resolution. I think we need to look at a resolution. The city can't not pay their bills. We, we have to pay our bills. We have to be responsible. And I think that um, a lot, most of the people that are on city council now are not in office at the time when all these obligations were made during the time of good growth and good economic times they couldn't have foreseen this this and you know even though i think uh alderman woodrick's been out there trying to sell the sewer lines that are underneath our ground he hasn't got any takers yet so they're ours <laughs> and we need to pay for them even though they're going nowhere to no to no homes we put them in the ground and you know we have to pay for them. These are all um, bad scenarios. As far as the um, refinancing options that are here, I, I, I'll use my own example. The, the way I think of it is um, six years ago, I got a 10-year mortgage, and I have four years left on it. And it's really, really hard for me to make that payment. But it, I, could, I could easily get a 30-year mortgage right now, and I could easily make the payments. But my, in the long run, I'd pay a lot more money. In the, in the long run, I'd probably pay $100,000 in interest when I could just, when I, when I could just like cut and cut and, and, and figure out a way to pay this for four more years, I'll be done. So to me, that, this is, that, that's kind of how I compared it with this uh, refinancing on a much smaller level, of course. But um, uh, again, I think the city and uh, it has cut and cut, they've cut their, Employees over 20 percent. They've they've cut. Um, the, the, so far, services haven't been seen. I don't think by residents, but there's a lot that's been cut, and uh, I think that they're in the process of probably cutting more. Um, but there's no there's no fat in this budget at any department level. There just isn't. I, I've seen what they've been doing for the last four years, three and a half years, and and uh, they're doing without all over. So. Um, it's a bad it's a bad situation and I'll tell you it's really hard I've said it before it's really hard to raise your own bills and I have to pay these bills too and things are hard all over but uh, I would say that um, of the three terrible options that we've been given uh, I don't see it, I think it would, irre, it would be irresponsible to pick one or two and we'd have to do scenario three but as I said before I would like to look into um, just what could be put into um, property taxes so we could at least get that tax um, homeowners could get some kind of tax relief from that during income tax time so Alderman Munn. sorry <coughs> uh, yeah I'm, uh, I'm going for option four right now um, <laughs> you know, again since you just dropped this on us today you know again <laughs> we need a little more information and I really have a hard time finding how some of these agencies like the York for Bristol Sanitary sitting on loads of cash and we're sitting there struggling when we paid, obviously our money went into that place to give them, give them the surplus. So something's going on there that, 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 our, that Rob needs to talk to Susan about and see what's going on. So again, I, I just can't see how they're sitting on cash all fat, dumb and happy and we're sitting there scrounging every day. Sewer wants more, water wants more. Um, uh, and most people I talk to where I live can't afford anymore. Our water bill went up for 160, now it was 205 uh, for this current bill. That was going to go up to 250. Pretty soon your water bill and sewer bill is going to be more than any other service you have. Yeah, I don't think that's right. And um, basically, at this point, I'm not really uh, you know ready to choose any of these right now. So I'm sticking with four right now. Just to answer your question, though, from what I understand, the reason. Um, Mr. Fister and his, uh, well, formerly Mr. Fister's group, um, they, they did not want to expand uh, the water and sewer lines for the new growth to the extent that the city did, so the city decided to take on that obligation. We took it on ourselves. From, this is the way I understand it. Uh, and because we, we now have people, these lines do go up to 
houses. I mean, Bristol Bay is one of them that is serviced, I believe, by, um, isn't that correct, by Rob Roy? So they do go somewhere and they do service people. There's people at the end of the lines, but there are not as many people, like say in Grand Reserve, um, anywhere near what we thought that was coming in there. Uh, we were told, what, 2,700 people would be served by this, and I think there's a couple hundred out there. So there's a huge discrepancy, and that explains, you know, that was a decision that the former city council made to do that. So I, I just want to clarify that, that they, they made a decision not to go ahead with that kind of expansion, and the city wanted to do it, so the city took on that debt obligation. Alderman Spears? Um, I'm going to wait until we get all the information. Okay, and the, all the information you're talking about is do you want to see if um, some of, some more of this debt can be put into uh, property, taxes. property taxes? That's the only other piece of information we're missing. Is that correct? We all are aware of that? Oh, could, could you wait till it gets you? Um, Alderman Plocher. Uh, I'm not in favor of refinancing. I know that for a fact. I'm not going to add millions and millions of dollars just to spread this out. Um, I'd like to see the numbers put in the taxes and that before I make a decision like that. Just someone to mull over for a while. Um, I'm with Marty on this one, though. I think we all need to look outside the box. I'm open to anybody's suggestions, residents too, and it doesn't mean I'm going to agree with them, but we need to think hard on this. There's got to be a way to do something. Hmm. Yes, sir. <laughs> this is a debt that we need to pay. Unfortunately, there's no way we're going to get out of it. And um, with that being said, looking at the scenarios that have been presented, I have to echo all of uh, Alderman Sutcliffe's sentiments on this. And I, I would choose out of the three bitter pills, scenario three. Some of the other information I'd like to see is some additional spending cuts proposed. Um, Already, since I've been on this council, garbage fees have went up. We've been student entertainment tax, a water rate increase, water infrastructure fee, and the tax levy that just passed, the rate is going up about 12.5%. So for me, this conversation would be a lot easier if I knew that the city was making a commitment to aggressive spending cuts. I don't think that has happened yet. We have to institute more spending cuts, think outside the box like I've heard several times, there's been some proposals during budget talks. And granted, that's not going to solve all of our problems and only be minuscule part of our problem. But it makes this conversation a whole lot easier. I mean, just like the Speaker of the House saying he's not going to take private airlines, he's taking passenger airline. I mean, that's the, the steps we have to take and it makes it a lot easier for our residents if we make those cuts. It makes this a lot easier to handle, a lot easier to discuss. So. I guess that's option four. The only comments I would have to make on that is um, the city will be making those further cuts, but those are all more related to the general fund. They do not affect the sewer fund at all. Uh, we need to have staff to handle the sewer lines to, to continue doing these repairs. If, if somebody's uh, got a break in their yard, they're going to want somebody to show up to fix it. We have, this is one of those funds where the people who are employed to handle this, um, we need to have them. We don't have, how many are employed to do this? To go off the top of your head, do you know? Three? Sewers? Just sewer? Yeah. Three. We have three people who work in, uh, and are paid out of the sewer fund. Like I said, we have 52 full-time employees and uh, we will be reviewing the budget again and we will we'll be presenting things to you at the next city council meeting but this does not affect this problem so the city staff is constantly um, going through the budget and trying to come up with other places to cut but um, all of these things for instance like the holiday under the stars people we had somebody call in and they thought you know well why do we have this Christmas tree we're wasting money on decorations all of this was donated. It's all donated. We're not taking any money out of the city taxes. Uh, businesses are donating. Residents are donating. Organizations, just so that our residents can have a nice Christmas program. 
but none of this, the old jail, people keep saying that tax revenue, the local tax revenue, that one even is a, a flow through your tax dollars that you gave to the state came back to our community and are now being held by the county board. So it came back to you and it's in the hands of the county board. Um, and it's not something out of our tax revenues and we actually raised enough funds through the haunted house to pay for any uh, insurance costs or any incidentals for the lawyers that uh, fees that we had to use to close on that <laughs> lawyers <laughs> but um, all of these were trying to be very fiscally responsible and not uh, you know we cut we didn't go to the municipal league meeting this year the, the members of the city council usually that's something that uh, we like to do we 12 years I was on the city council this is the first year we haven't done that so I know the staff is being very careful I know the police department is being very careful uh, we are the chief tells me bare bones were down in all of these areas but this is something that um, it's very unfortunate because I remember when I was on the city council I know all the Spears we often asked questions she especially was very you know going through the budget all the time and um, I have to be honest sometimes we just didn't get the information I, I have memos from that time that you know we asked questions and we weren't provided with the answer so um, I think if we could go back you know hindsight is 2020 like they say but uh, I'm not even sure that we could have affected the vote because we were minority members so these are things we brought up over the years and our concerns about things and how uh, things were being handled and um, you know I think unfortunately it proved to be too true so uh, I wish like Alderman Gilson said that some of the things could have been done differently um, but we can't fix it now we can only go forward so I don't think any one of us wants to do anything to raise anybody's taxes we are all aware um, I, I know that you've read uh, some of the information in the paper about this alternate energy um, proposal that's coming towards us. These are outside the box kinds of ideas like you're talking about. We're constantly looking, I'm constantly looking this for new uh, revenue sources to alleviate these taxes and these burdens on our taxpayers. But um, you know, we're constantly trying to encourage new people to come to the community and uh, that's what uh, that Whitewater Park was all about. Uh, in the downtown, we've already had quite a few people come in last weekend. And when I tried to explain to some people who don't understand why I'm so excited about this is when we have new people coming in, they go to our local businesses and eat, that increases our sales tax revenues. And then maybe new businesses will come in that want to service if they see a lot of people there on the weekends. Okay, maybe I can have a little store in the downtown now because there are customers here that weren't here before so it's all tied together but uh, I think I mean Alderman Wedrick was out there and he's very excited about it too so yes th these are the kinds of things we have to do and we have to keep bringing new people in here and bring in the customers so that these businesses can can actually uh, stay in business and um, I think we all realize that so I think uh, like a lot of you said, you weren't even on the city council when these, uh, these decisions were made. And even those of us who were on the city council, if uh, we tried to uh, bring up questions about them, uh, we were ignored. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, these are really unfortunate times. And like all the other aldermen, I don't want to pay these bills either. <clears throat> My budget's really, really tight. and. Uh, you know this is the last thing we want to do especially at Christmas time so but uh, I think let's then if anybody else has any questions yes ma'am what's um, what's the timeline that that we're looking at uh, do ever we required to start making payments at some point almost all of your debt service payments are going to be due in December uh, for this year we're okay, okay. Um, so we wouldn't have time to refinance and be able to make those payments anyway uh, so we are looking at December 2011 for most of these payments. So um, I think it's three to four months of lead-in time if we wanted to do a restructuring or a refinancing. Um, so we are, you know, in front of it. We are 
we are even if we were to implement a sewer fee, you know, we don't have to do that until June 30th to have it uh, have an impact through the entire next fiscal year. So we do have some time on this. So if we got, I have one last question. If we got a really big project, say say that Ochoa thing had come through and we had this really big project next year, uh, could we vote next year to abate the tax? Yes. Or we could then stop it. Typically. It Typically, abatement ordinances are due in uh, January, February, or March. So um, if it were to come along in September and annex, we'd be looking at the next fiscal year beyond right. that. But so the but next yeah. year, we could abate it. Yep. So just because we wouldn't abate it one year, that doesn't mean we couldn't abate it the next year. Correct. OK, so, so this wouldn't have to go on indefinitely once we don't abate it. Right. And then it's the, on the Rob Roy bonds, which is where the real estate tax impact was, Again, that's a it's a year by year analysis. Yes, sir. So, uh, Peter, I guess maybe it's a question for you on the abatement process. Um, so we don't abate these Rob Roy's. How does it work? I mean, who does the calculations? How are the tax rates figured? How is it implemented on the property tax bill? Because I'm not familiar with that process at all. I can I can answer most of that. I think. Um, Within the uh, bond ordinance, uh, there's a debt service schedule, which is what we make the payments on each year if we have the alternate revenues. Uh, so when we approve that at city council, which we did in 2005, we file that with the county clerk. And the county clerk puts that in the file and says, um, okay, this is gonna go on the tax bill each year unless we get an abatement ordinance from uh, the city. Uh, and so when they don't get an abatement ordinance, they pull that from the file and they say, okay, here's the number and it's in there. And then remember, you levy for a dollar amount. You never levy for a tax rate specifically. So they apply that dollar amount to all the taxable property in the city, and then that's how you get the tax rate. Does that show up on the tax bill as a separate line, or was that? That's a good question. One I don't know. It rolled right into the city of Yorkville. It would be rolled into the city of Yorkville okay. line item. Okay. Are you sure? Because every county's different. Well, we would have to check. You would, uh, if you looked at one of your tax bills now, for the people that live here, I don't think each debt obligation is listed separately. Mm -hmm. I believe it's all rolled up into the city. The library construction bond, which was a non-capped property tax from a general obligation bond approved by referendum, uh, is actually within the library tax levy line item within your tax bill. So there's the city of Yorkville, uh, which is, you know, let's say it's $400, and then there's the library one, it's 200. That actually includes their operations and their building, uh, building cost. So it may be. Um, and, and to add to your question about the abatement, if for any chance, a portion of the debt service is available to us. We could reduce that amount so that even though our debt service is 256000 or whatever it is next year, uh, 600, uh, and we receive 200000 in revenues, we would at least abate the two hundred so that what would go on the tax bill. So that's <clears> why um, the most accurate thing the most accurate thing to do is to have an <coughs> annual analysis of what's there what we owe what we can do and and how to cover it yeah Bart isn't the Rob Roy um, sewer though the one that services Kendall marketplace uh, it goes past Kendall marketplace but they don't use it um, I don't think so which one do they use maybe w one of the lower branches but uh, um, the branches that were authorized under 2005, I believe, bypassed it. Yes, no? Some of it goes to. They, they did serve by one. Okay. That's what I thought. Corrected. So if we got another store, that would be of assistance and allow us at least to, right. to, to lower the cut, the, the, hit, the hit. Most of the property that we had thought would pay for that bond was located and the area generally bounded by Eldomain Road to the west, uh, Baseline Road to the north, uh, our eastern property line, and then somewhere near Cornelius Road. So it's the Westbury Village property, uh, east, west, north, and south of all of those. And uh, uh, the West Haven property, which was formerly Del Webb, uh, Bristol Bay, so. But I guess the point I was going to make too, though, was with the Kendall Marketplace, if it wasn't for Kendall Marketplace, taking up the slack in our 
sales tax revenues that um, when Effie Wheaton went way down, we would have been in really, really bad shape because they took up, they kept us at a, even <coughs> when everybody else was showing a huge decrease in their sales tax revenues. Yes. Isn't that correct? So. Okay, well, does anybody else have any other comments or questions? Well, thank you very much, Peter, for coming in. I appreciate it. And so we just have to get a few more stores in uh, Kendall Marketplace. Okay, next item, City Council Report. There is no report on here. City Attorney's Report. No report. City Clerk's Report. No report. City Treasurer. No report. City Administrator. I do have one report, uh, Your Honor. Uh, we did open uh, RFP proposals, or RFP submittals, I rather, uh, for our riverfront building, uh, which is uh, located at 301 East Hydraulic. Uh, we had two vendors submit proposals today. Uh, one was Geneva Kayak Center, uh, which I believe uh, has just recently vacated uh, their spot in Geneva, uh, and the Yak Shack, which uh, I believe is actually uh, uh, another word for a kayak rather than an actual yak. So good to know. Uh, we have two kayak vendors uh, that are interested. Um, minimal deviations from the RFP that we had proposed. One of them, I think, uh, wanted to cap the amount of concessions per month at $1,200 that they were going to give the city. Uh, and the other one, uh, I think, had, uh, had offered $250 a month in rent instead of $200. Uh, and then was offering to give the city 20% of uh, instruction fees uh, and uh, classes that were taken out of it. So um, both uh, solid vendors uh, look like solid proposals. So uh, those will be discussed at Park Board on December 16th, and then from there probably at a committee of the City Council and the City Council after that. Yeah, I just want to ask if we got any, those are the only vendors that, that responded, those two? Yeah, those were the only two. We did submit it um, far and wide. Uh, we actually submitted it to the Illinois Paddling Council. Uh, and it got into their newsletter uh, and to some of their selected vendors, but uh, only two would actually respond. But didn't we open it up to more than just kayak vendors? We, did. we opened it up to any kind of vendors, yep. I mean, any kind of business at all. Yep. And the only ones we got are two kayak. Correct. Thank you. Anything else under Perks and Rec? That's all. I take it that's your Perks and Rec hat. Uh, that's all of my hats, yes. Okay. Finance yeah. director's report. Yeah. I, just, I have a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on, Ms. Pierce. Could you repeat that monthly fee again, the second vendor? Yeah, uh, the second vendor more? proposed $250 uh, in monthly rent as opposed to 200 which was the floor that was set within the RFP. So we said you had to, have a min you had to pay us a minimum of $200 per month for that space, and they had proposed 250 instead of 200 What did the other vendor? 200 Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good question. Okay, finance director. Uh, just a report, the audit is progressing and field work is scheduled to begin on December the 6th. Thank you. City engineer. Uh, yes, one item. Uh, the Fountain View developer has obtained their IDOT highway permit. Uh, Fountain View is on the uh, east side of Route 47, just north of the highway department. Um, so they've been bringing utilities across the highway over the past week. Uh, one thing that you'll start seeing next week is roadway work. Uh, they will also be removing the existing traffic signal and putting up a temporary stand wire signal. They need to do this because they need to modify the permanent signal. And then after a while, we'll be seeing a new permanent signal put back in there. So. Director of Public Works. Uh, just one thing. just want to let everybody know that we are done with the leave collection for the year. I know that everybody sees a few piles left around town and residents that have been calling and asking about that. We've been telling them that they do need to bag those and they still have the rest of this week and next week on their normal garbage pickup for those unlimited yard waste bags. Chief of Police? No report. Oh, I would just like to commend the police department and everybody else. I know Lori was involved too, who worked on uh, the traffic control for the Holiday Under the Stars. You guys did a great job. Um, I think it was, to me, the way I saw it was looked like regular Friday night traffic. So somehow you were able to really mitigate that, uh, and I, I think you did a great job. Thank you. It was a lot of public work stuff too. Thank you, uh, Eric. I got it. Thank you. I'm sorry I left you out too, but that's all right. 
Thank you very much. I, I think you know everybody in, in the staff of uh, parks, whoever was there. I think uh, all the staff members who who uh, volunteered uh, really appreciate it, and I think the residents did. They all seem to be having a great time, and uh, I, I think it was a great event. So, and Glory did an outstanding job once again. Every year it gets bigger and better. So thank you, Glory. Uh, Community development director. Just one item that uh, I just want to announce the Kendall County Planning Consortium. They will be having their meeting on November 30th at 7 p.m. It will be held at the historic courthouse, and the topic will be Kendall County Transportation Plans and Land Resource Management Plans. Relations Officer Glory, tell us how great. It was. <laughs> well, actually, I just really want to thank the police department, the public works, the parks and rec department, and everybody that helped, and all the community organizations and groups because really most of everything was donated. Um, I think we're going to be in the black again, about $3,000. So we did pretty well. Um, I couldn't have done it without all the community groups. Um, everybody seems to want to help out during the event. Um, we had a great um, turnout over at Parkview Christian Academy, who you know was full most of the night and. Um, we had, you know, the Kendall County Forest Preserve, we had the Girl Scouts, we had um, the Junior Women's Club, all the groups were um, donated their time and um, actually money to some of those things. So um, I really couldn't have done it and, you know, put money in the kitty for next year um, without their help. The other thing I do want to announce is that we're also, I'm also working on a volunteer income tax assistance program with the Kendall County Food Pantry, and we're looking for volunteers to um, provide you know, income tax help for low-income families through January, um, February, March, and April, and we're having an orientation session on um, Thursday, December 2nd at 6 p.m. here at City Hall. Um, I have gotten quite a few calls, so uh, we're working with the IRS to provide that um, service here in Yorkville. Okay, next is community and liaison reports. Does anybody have a community liaison report? The only report um, I would have to make is that I attended the KenCom meeting, uh, and uh, the city of Yorkville joined with uh, Swigo and Plano in vetoing. Uh, the new um, intergovernmental agreement that was presented at that meeting, and our veto was overridden by a vote of eight to three. So uh, that was the end of uh, that discussion for now. So just wanted you all to know um, we're continuing to review things about that. Uh, committee reports, Public Works Committee report, we have three items. First, we'll take PW 2010-69, a motion to approve the intergovernmental agreement for the replacement of the River Road Bridge over Blackberry Creek and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute subject to legal and staff review. Good. Any comments or questions? We're on 2010-69, correct? Yeah. Just a clarity question. I, I kind of heard two different answers, Bart, so if you can clear this up for me, for my sake. Um, are we, if this goes forward and this agreement signed, is are we going to be able to pay for this bridge replacement out of all completely out of MFT funds, or is this going to hit our general fund? It would be all out of MFT funds. I'm okay with it then. I just want to know that that's the fact. Okay. Thank you. We have that amount in there now in the MFT fund. Uh, it's not in this year's budget um, or next year's budget that we had previously talked about. Um, we are getting additional disbursements of MFT from the state, uh, five disbursements of about $70,000. So uh, that's almost our entire year's budget and additional money spread out over the next two fiscal years. Um, and so 
the way this project is going to work is there's going to be a fair amount of engineering involved. So um, those costs are going to come in uh, the next two or three fiscal years, uh, and then the construction costs will come in the third and fourth fiscal year. Uh, so we're looking at 2014, 2015, and doing some estimates of spreading that cost over the actual implementation of the project, uh, you'd be able to fund it out of MFT. So by 2012, we have to come up with... Wasn't that the... Um, in the agreement? City reimburses the county for said 20% on a before April 30th, 2012? Correct. And we're counting on funds coming in from the state to cover that, correct? Correct. And we had estimated $40,000 due next fiscal year, $20,000 the following fiscal year, uh, $100,000 the fiscal year after that, and then $500,000 that last fiscal year. So that puts us out all the way to 2014, 2015. But we use MFT for other projects that are qualified only for MFT. Do we have any things that we're anticipating? Uh, sure. Game Farm Road is one of them. Uh, okay. The other one is Route 47. A portion of that will go uh, into MFT. My opinion is we're committing funds again that we really don't know whether we have or not. And I just don't want it to end up like these bonds or when we go out for grants, we have no matching funds. And to me, this is similar. I, I make absolutely no warrant to being able to pay for right. Game Farm Road out of MFT uh, solely. Um, you'll be able to fund a portion of, of Game Farm Road with MFT because that is going to be rolled out over a few fiscal years as well. Uh, but there will be a, a point with that project where you'll probably have to go out and try to figure out how to, to pay for that or not do it. Now, Route 47, do we pay for, out of MFT, do we pay any portion? Portion of it, yes. Okay. So, um, s streets and sidewalks, street lights, um, traffic signals, if there are any, um, those type of things. But all of our sewer and water projects will be paid for out of the sewer and water fund. i I just like to point out one difference with this one is that this is a safety issue. This bridge is failing. So... Um, you can't let people be driving over a bridge and have it collapse because you'll be paying a lot more. Uh, th this is definitely a safety issue. You know, uh, what happens as far as these other projects, uh, you know, there's potholes that we can fill, but uh, this one I think is we really have to be careful with. So this is what uh, we've been told by the county. Yes, ma'am. But don't they use county taxes that we're all paying? I mean, this is the same argument that we hear in, in other areas. But the county is taxing us. And now the residents in Yorkville also are going to have to kick in a percent. So how can we say that that's different? Um, it's a city bridge. Yes. It's a city bridge. It's not a county bridge. This is our bridge. So they're actually helping us pay this. See, the way I understand it, is that not correct? It's our obligation because it's our bridge. I just want to say that um, it looks uh, like from this memo that nobody else probably has that um, phase one and phase two of engineering, 80% uh, of that's being um, covered by the Federal Highway Bridge Program. So we're paying 20% of engineering, one and two. And then um, phase three cost, which is the construction, I guess, 80% of that is being paid for by um, IDOT funding. So once again, we we're only having to pay for 20% of the cost of this project overall. Is, is that correct? Correct. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. I'd like to point out too that we already have a weight restriction on this bridge um, and we do not yet have to close this but it could be a very real possibility in the near future if we do not fix it quickly. We have exposed rebar on this bridge. Oh. It's crumbling as we speak. Oh. We're lucky that no significant damage 
the by um, annual thing was reported, but it's a ticking time bomb waiting to happen. Hopefully, no one's on the bridge when we have to close it, and if we do have to close it. If there was heavy flooding, who knows what would happen? So Correct. it's definitely a high priority. Do we have any other questions? We'll call, please. Closure. Aye. Order. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Next item. So next item is actually broken into three parts. So we'll do them individually. That's PW 2010-75. First one is part A. Motion to approve an ordinance Alderman regard. Culture. Excuse me, one minute. Um, um, may I address the City Council on the sure. culture, especially as Chair of the uh, Public Works? Uh, upon receipt of these um, proposed documents, I would ask that the City Council consider tabling them because I need to do further research. I think we took some action in this area uh, when I first came on board as City Attorney, and I need the time to go back and research it because I think some of these issues have already been addressed. And so I would beg the uh, consideration of the City Council to table this to allow me to reconsider or research it before uh, to December the 14th? issue is discussed. Is that okay? December 14th would be uh, fine. So can we make a motion to table this to December 14th? Second. Okay. Aye. 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 Closure. Aye. Order. Aye. 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 One final number three. PW. Moving right along. This is PW-2010-80. It was originally consent on item number seven. I'd like to make a motion. Uh, pass the one-year warranty period expired December 22, 2010. The warranty punch list has been complete. Recommend release warranty in the bond. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Alderman Teeling, second. Okay, do you have questions? Yeah, I actually uh, pulled this off to be discussed in committee level. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we all agree by majority that we were going to uh, wait till December 22nd uh, when the official warranty um, time period expired before we went for further and passed this. I know that was the majority in, in committee level, and I'm not sure why it's here. Is that correct? Yeah, but I believe that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Yeah. It's well, stated that we're waiting. Are we waiting till it says when your return expires on December 20th, the warranty process has been completed? It says recommend the release of the warranty bond. Is that releasing that now? On December 22nd. Okay, so we are going to release it on December 22nd. That's what this says. Okay, okay. And I apologize. Um, any other questions? No we'll follow. Aye. 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 We don't have an economic development committee report, a public safety committee report, or an administration committee report. So is there any additional business? Yes, sir. We have two items. First, I would like to ask if maybe we could get a joint meeting between us and the YBA DS board. George, could you ask him that? I'm sorry? A joint city council meeting maybe between us and YBDS? YBSD? Yes, that would be the right one. You want me to ask that? If no, you the could. staff will. Oh, I can ask that in committee level if you, I mean, at the liaison the next meeting if that's what you're asking. If that would be appropriate or the staff. Or you want staff to do it. I'm happy to do it, or you can do it as well, Bart. <laughs> I think the administrator could do it quicker. We can call tomorrow. That's fine. And the other, th other thing is, is I've been noticing that uh, Old Second isn't doing so well. I know we have some funds in there. I was mm. just wondering if we're covered and everything on that. I'm sure that you've looked into it, but we have. We are collateralized with them, okay. which means we are secure in our funds. Any other 
Fish and Business, uh, right, when they were talking about Fountain View putting in um, a temporary light in, it reminded me of Sycamore Street light on 34 in Sycamore, and I just wondered what the status is of that, because I thought we only had 18 to 24 months to put in a permanent light. I believe we got an extension through 2012, Joe. I'm thinking of extension one position That's good. It right. is a budgeted uh, item that has been approved by City Council for fiscal year 12 13 as the MFG line item. We'll show you okay. The other thing is, um, I would, uh, somebody I know wanted to move to Yorkville and found several houses that they really liked, but they weren't able to purchase them because of the um, HOAs being in arrears. Yeah. So, uh, is there anything we can do? Because I'd love people to come buy houses in Yorkville. <laughs> Uh, we have talked, uh, I think it was actually at a mayor's meeting um, at Bristol Bay about uh, things that uh, the HOA management company can do. Uh, most of it's between the residents and the management company uh, and the residents. So, um, you know, we've, when people call us and ask that and say, uh, you know, isn't this awful and can you do anything, we say, you know, if you want us to call the, uh, the people who owe money, and uh, you know, ask them to fulfill their moral obligation or their financial obligation to, to pay those fees. You know, we, we might do that because it is preventing people from moving into the city. But uh, uh, there's no ordinance we can pass, or there's no you know uh, official action we can take. Well, I wondered in the case of some of these subdivisions that are bank owned, um, if it would be worth their while to to bring these um, th these costs, these bills up to date, in order to be able to sell some properties. Have they, anyone asked them about that? Um, I have talked to two different HOA management companies, one of which um, is part of a, you know, or was foreclosed upon. This is the new management company, uh, and one that's for an existing builder, uh, and both of them uh, have declined to do that at this point. Mm. So they are funding the HOA budgets, both of them actually, uh, to a large extent to keep open pools and uh, clubhouse operations. Um, but, uh, you know, actually funding HOA dues and arrears wasn't something they made the step to yet. Yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of instances there's no one to call because people have lost their homes and they don't live there anymore. So there, we wouldn't, I, I, I just wondered if we could work with the banks on that. <clears throat> That's unfortunate because the only way you to buy a house in these subdivisions is if you have cash. Because a mortgage won't give you a loan if, if you're over 15% in arrears on your HOA. Uh, okay, and I just want to say that I uh, went to Howl the End of the Stars with a friend of mine. She's from Oswego, and she says our um, our celebration is much better than Oswego's. Not that I'm in competition with my hometown, but I am kind of, and I'm glad that ours is better. <laughs> That's all. Anybody else have any additional business? And I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.